Welcome back for another video. At last we're back with another episode of The Experts ahead of the Game Week 9 deadline. This series consists of hundreds of participants including a bunch of top all-time managers and content creators. Every week we reveal The Experts team plus look at their transfer plans, captaincy, chip usage and more. This wisdom of the crowd approach will guide you to better decisions and a better rank, so make sure you're subscribing to the channel. So the top ranked expert heading into Game Week 9 is Sergster, who's up to 2.2k overall after scoring 70 points in Game Week 8. He's passed the 500 mark now and 501 total points. I'm delighted to announce that we've also welcomed 30 new experts to the series over the international break, so that top spot's only going to get more competitive, and we'll continue to highlight the top ranked expert as the season unfolds. Next up is the transfer activity among the experts. Lots of activity has 36% enrolling the transfer, 34% making one transfer and 13% making two transfers. Nearly all of those that are making two moves are taking a hit as 12% of the experts have taken a minus four. 17% have the wildcard active. We did speak with two of the experts this week who have sent their wildcard drafts in, more on that shortly. Let's look at the players that are actually transferring in and out and the top player is Madison with almost a quarter of the experts moving for him. Well under 10% owned among the entire player base and yet this game week alone 24% of the experts are getting him. Tony's in second with 18%, this one probably boosted as a consequence of Izak's injury. The other standout replacement for Izak is Solanke who 7% have opted for. It's a great fixture for Liverpool home to Brighton and we'll look at the caps to see shortly. 11% of the experts have brought Salah in ahead of that one. Zaha also transferred in by 11% ahead of a great fixture run all the way to the World Cup after game week 16. Great, he's dropped to 4.3 mil now and he's another Palace player to consider as a cheap route into reasonable defence. Mitrovic was already very highly owned by the experts and as such just 2% have transferred him in. 2% have also opted for Barnes from Leicester, perhaps flying under the radar for 6.9 mil as a player to pair up with Madison. A streaky player but when you catch him at the right time he can be a great asset. Interestingly, 9% have sold De Bruyne ahead of the Manchester derby. City of course blank in gimmick 12, so it's a transfer they're making to get ahead of the curve with a better looking fixture for Salah. The caveat is that in game week 10, when City are home to Southampton, if De Bruyne starts that one, he has potential to score massive while Liverpool are away to Arsenal, and he's only blanked in one start all season. Despite over 70% ownership in the wider player base, Jesus' ownership continues to bleed among the experts, and he's far off the template team now, interestingly. Following Sun's hat-trick, it looks sensible to sell Kulusevski, which 4% have done. Richarlison was on the score sheet over the break as well, so Spurs' front three, or perhaps even front two, looks unpredictable, and Sun's a likely starter once again. A quick look at the chip users next, before the captaincy in the template team. As we saw, 17% of the wildcard active heading into Gaming 9, and 65% have already used it. So that means just 18% have the wildcard left. Gimmick 12 or Gimmick 13 probably the last good opportunities to use the chip as it is a way to get a little bit ahead of the pack as we navigate the blank for City and Arsenal. The free hit bench boost and triple captain chips are largely untouched besides a few managers experimentally using. Speaking of the wildcards, we caught up with a couple of the experts who have sent their active wildcard team in. The first is Bond FPL team, whose rank history includes a top 1k finish and a couple of further top 10k finishes. This is his team and we asked for his thoughts and he said, our team's very different from the 10 play, as I think both Trent and Cancelo are not worth their prices, and in the meantime, Chelsea have better fixtures, so I prefer Kukure with his cheaper price as well. I will use my four free transfers to bring them in later on in Gimmick 12 and Gimmick 13 onwards by Dan Graydon. For this draft, unlike the 10 play, I use my wildcard to attack the short term fixtures with differentials in Barnes, Kukure, Foden, all ahead of Martinelli, Cancelo, and Trent, who in my opinion might be better long term, but worse assets in the short term. The second wildcard team is from FPL Hobbit, who has two top 10k finishes in his last four seasons, plus a further 14k finish. He said, No Alexander Arnold is a risk, but I don't like the fixtures until game week 13. Same with Martinelli, where I feel like chasing a bit of upside with Bowen, or burying my season, whichever. Solanke is there, so I have someone to blame when everything goes sideways. Best of luck to both managers on the wildcard. On to the expert captaincy. Unsurprisingly, Haaland's top with 69% of the experts opting for him. Can his run continue, returning in every game? Salah's in second with 22% of the vote. We saw in game week 8 that the risk reward can be worth it and will pay off at times, with De Bruyne's son and Kane all outscoring Haaland. Salah was on the score sheet over the international break, scoring a brace, and then he was given the second match off, a friendly, to return to Liverpool early. 
6% have opted for Madison, who is home to Nottingham Forest. They're rock bottom in the league for expected goals conceded, and you feel like it's now or never for Rodgers. Lastly, a couple of managers have gone for Sterling and Tony as captain. Drop a comment below of your thoughts this week. Onto the expert team reveal, this is the aggregated team of their highest owned players. So the team is as follows. Zaha, Madison and Tony all joined the team this week. Their template's moving fast and Perisic's ownership has gradually declined and currently barely makes the template and could be gone by next week. It's a very strong looking template team as expected. De Bruyne perhaps the other who could imminently drop out in favour of Salah, whose ownership among the experts have been going the opposite way. As always we've included the experts and the overall ownership percentages from last week on the left hand side. When there's a big disparity between the expert and overall percentage ownership, you could consider this a big opportunity to make ground. For example, Mitrovic with 75% ownership versus 31% overall, or Madison with 40% versus 6% overall. It wasn't even that long ago where the template looked too strong with a back five of Alexander-Arnold, Cancelo, James Diaz and Perisic etc. Goes to show how fast things can change with the current template now a back three, and a good reminder to always remain flexible as the landscape shifts. If you need to, do pause and rewind sections if you need to, as these videos are packed with information you won't find anywhere else. As such, if this has been useful, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for the support. Each game week, we ask the experts to offer their insight for the game week ahead. Prem Tipster says, If I didn't own Madison, then I'd bring him in for Leicester's game week 9 and fixture swing. Nottingham Forest, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Leeds, and Wolves. Fantasy Football Scout Luke says, I would have liked to do De Bruyne to Salah, but unfortunately, Isaac's injury has forced my hand. I've chosen Solanke simply as it allows Trippier to trend further down the line, as well as De Bruyne to Salah. FPL Finn says, I found it difficult to choose between Tony and Solanke, but I had to choose Tony as I think he gets the most points going forward, even though Solanke, who is cheap, could give me more options later. Frodo FPL says, It's been a long two weeks, can't wait to get going again. Naldo says, Salah being sold by the masses allows an opportunity to gain rank, or if Haaland goes mental again, then I cry myself to sleep for a week. Psycho FPL says, a narrative common in FPL is that the international break is the best time to wildcard to capitalise on price changes and allow flexibility in responding to injuries during the international break matches. In reality, we saw very few price rises thus far. In a sense, this is a self-defeating prophecy as wildcards do not count towards price rises. The more people wildcard because they anticipate price changes, the fewer price rises we actually see. In regard to the injuries point, I think Isaac may be the only reasonably owned FPL asset that actually got injured this break. And lastly, Adriel says, Isaac is fraudulent. Thanks to the experts for their continued involvement in the project. That concludes the Gaming 9 episode of the experts. If you did find it useful, as always, please like the video and subscribe for weekly content to come all season. For more Gaming 9 content, click either video on screen. See you soon for the next one.